hold fasts. When I was a young child, we lived in southeastern Alaska, which is a beautiful place of waterways and small islands, very much influenced by the warm Japanese currents, where the land is filled with wild creatures, and so is the sea. There were two ways to get to our float of trailers and houses on logs lashed together with boardwalks in between, either by boat or by plane. The boardwalks were rough from the cork boots of the loggers, and we were always having to wear our very bulky life jackets so that if we fell into the bay, or the chuck as we called it, we would not drown. But I loved being outside and soon found that if I lay down on the board walk and became very still and quiet, I could hear and see a lot of things. Looking toward the shoreline, I often saw bear, moose, moose families, or elk, lynx, bobcat, sometimes cougar. Sometimes I would see these animals swim across the bay. There were grizzlies, bears of all sorts that came to catch their meals. And there were animals that I never knew the names of until years later, for I was not good at describing them to an adult. I loved to watch the bald eagles and the osprey catch their breakfast and watch the other marine life swim by or rest upon the shore. In the winter time, the wolves would come down to the bay, and if the ice was thick enough, we had to stay indoors, for these animals were very hungry. I remember one bay that we were tied in. There were a lot of red fruit fish with green tails all over one morning. I don't remember if we had a river behind that camp, but they were all headed somewhere in a very big hurry. Then my favorite, the great whales playing outside of the bay in the open water of the channels. If I put my ear to the board walk, I could hear them talking and singing to one another. Yes, the ocean teemed with life and I loved to watch it. From the largest things to the very smallest things. I used to watch the jellyfish pump to the top of the water. I would take them out and let some of them dry on the walk and then I would pull them off and eat them. They were very salty. Now, I would not recommend them in your diet, even though science is now using them in pill form to restore lost memory of dementia patients. Yes, Alaska was filled with marine life, but today what we want to focus on is a plant, the kelp plant. The kelp is a forest, but not of trees. It is made of seaweed called giant kelp, which grows in cool coastal waters where sunlight can go down deep to a rocky sea floor. Kelp needs sunlight in order to grow. The fronds are leaf or blade-like attachments extending from the stipe, sometimes along its full length. And these are the sites of nutrient uptake and photosynthetic activity. Many kelp species have bulbs, pneumatocytes, or gas-filled bladders as they're called, usually located at the base of fronds near the stipe. These structures provide the necessary buoyancy for kelp to maintain an upright position in the water column. Water clarity affects the depth to which sufficient light can be transmitted and in ideal conditions a giant kelp can grow as much as 30 to 60 centimeters, that's 11.8 inches to 1 foot 9 inches vertically every day. Some species are annuals, while others are perennials, living for more than 20 years. In perennial kelp forests, maximum growth rates occur during the upwelling months, which are spring and summer, and the dieback correspond to reduced nutrient availability and shorter light hours and increased storm frequency. So, what causes these massive plants to reach such huge proportions and live for up to 20 years through storm and tempest and tides? The answer is the holdfasts. The holdfast is the root-like mass that anchors the thallus or kelp to the sea floor. Though unlike true roots, it is not responsible for absorbing and delivering nutrients to the rest of the thallus as the leaves do the nutrient gathering. The only job of this root-like mass is to hold fast. How do they accomplish this holding fast? The secret to the long-lasting life for a kelp plant 
is that the rock they affix upon must be deep enough in water and porous enough a rock for the roots to not only affix to that rock but to burrow deep within that rock. They cannot do this and hold fast. They must be broken up and die and wash ashore. Here are some of the reasons a kelp plant breaks free and dies. Taking root on a sandbar gives them no solid, long-lasting hold. Sand is not strong enough or stable enough to hold it fast as the plant matures and becomes heavy. Then when the storm and the tempest and the tide come, they can be f pulled free from that sandbar and die. Sometimes kelp begins its growth on small stones that can only hold fast for a little while until the kelp plant becomes too large and then the small rock is broken off and the plant is soon dead and gone, leaving the small stone with the scars of the root system striving to gain a permanent foothold. Sometimes they start out on a larger rock, but they're in a portion of the sea that is not deep enough water and when the tide recedes, the water leaves the kelp vulnerable to scorching and death by the sunlight without the water to keep it moist. Therefore, the kelp cannot live. There are a few other things, even in a perfect condition of large rocks in deep water, that can kill a kelp forest. Sea urchins love kelp roots and live on them. And they are on the uprise as their predators are dying off from man's greed and radioactive filth in the sea. When I was a child, sea otters were plentiful and they eat sea urchins, but due to their lovely thick warm pelt, they are now nearly extinct where they were once plentiful. Starfish are another of the marine life that are dying off by the hundreds due to radioactive waters and these eat the sea urchin as well. So, with the ecosystem out of balance, the kelp forests are being destroyed in many places, which is upsetting the marine life in a great way. In the scriptures, Job said, My righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Job 27, 6. My righteousness I hold fast. Wait a minute, I hear someone say, I thought we were to have Christ's righteousness, so what is our righteousness? The Bible tells us, Deuteronomy 6.25, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as He hath commanded us. Deuteronomy 6.25 So you see, we have a part to do in obtaining salvation, in living. We must love God enough to do all that he has commanded us. And this is Christ's righteousness. For he said in John 6, 38, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of my Father who sent me. So to keep the commandments of God is to have the righteousness of Christ, which according to Deuteronomy 6, 25, is our righteousness. Hebrews 4.14 says, Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. As we see, kelp cannot live on a sandbar long. It needs a large, immovable rock. We also need the rock. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. So Jesus Christ is our rock. Here is some kelp anchored to a large rock, but they're well above the tide line, and when the water recedes, the sun withers, scorches, and kills them. So we shall die spiritually if we just cling to the edge of the rock and try to stay in our comfort zone well above the deep waters, tides, and storms of life. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. Revelation 21.6 So we must abide in deep waters 
For the rock of our salvation has given us a place to grow and flourish, and only there can we bear much fruit, which is his command to us. So remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I am come upon thee. Revelation 3. 3. He urges us, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Don't hold fast to everything, but learn to do well. Learn what is good, and hold fast that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 Revelation 3.11 Behold. Jesus says, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Just as there are plenty of tiny pebbles on the ocean floor, pretending to be a good solid place for a kelp to attach to, so there are plenty of men who want your worship. They are power hungry and they would take the place of the true rock, Jesus Christ. But the word of God says, Cease ye from men whose breath is in his nostrils. For wherein is he to be accounted of? Is he going to be there standing for you at the judgment bar of God and plead your cause? No. Isaiah 2.22 Cease ye from men whose breath is in his nostrils. By attaching to that priest or pastor and letting him do all your daily Bible study and prayer for you, you're not only killing yourself, but you're doing permanent damage to his soul as well, just as these rocks have permanent holes in them from where kelp tried to attach to them. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 1.13 But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Hebrews 3.6 Hold fast the hope that is within you. Through obedience to the commandments of God, out of your pure love for Hold Jesus. fast. Faith is not a passive mental assent to a creed, a tradition, or a doctrine. It is an action verb. By faith, Noah built a boat. By faith, Abel offered a more pure sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Abraham moved because God said to. God commanded and they did it. Hold fast that which thou hast. Hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Revelation 2, 25, But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen.